channel. I'm back to break down this 10 game slate on FanDuel and DraftKings. Uh, I apologize for not having a video released the last two days. Uh, I've been experiencing some technical difficulties uh, and it was clear that my process that I was doing wasn't going to work to get these videos, you know, uploaded to YouTube to you guys. So I've gone ahead and reevaluated what I was doing. Uh, I've improved my recording software. I've improved my storage. And so going forward, I don't, I don't think we're going to have those issues anymore. And uh, I look forward to moving on from that. So I just want to go ahead and apologize to you guys. And I actually will be doing uh, a giveaway. I do feel bad for not having a video out the last two days. So I'll be doing a giveaway at the end of this video. All you got to do is stay tuned to the end and I'll give you the details on that. Um, I do have my new Patreon package long, launched over there on Patreon. Uh, you'll get access to my power rankings, which is my top three plays at each position of the day, regardless of salary. My cheat sheet, which breaks down my top plays by price range, high price, mid price, low range. And then you'll also get access to my pitching data sheet behind me, where you'll be able to sort this color-coded chart that I put together every day for your best hitting and pitching matchups. And lastly, you'll get access to my exclusive Discord chat, where you can ask me questions uh, you know, from six o'clock leading up until lock, I had mentioned that I do have a nine to five job, but I want to be able to help you guys later in the day. Unfortunately, I can't make a later video. So this is my way of helping you, um, you know, jump in the discord chat and you can ask me questions. If a guy was supposed to hit in the seventh spot and now he's hitting lead off, you know, how does that impact? Or maybe you have one last play that you need to put in your lineups and you have a certain salary left and you have to pick between two guys. Uh, you can hop into the Discord chat and ask me those questions. And uh, this package will include, you know, some more in-depth analysis I had mentioned in my last video that unfortunately had some issues exporting. Um, there is a lot more that goes into MLB DFS research, such as, uh, you know, pitcher or hitter versus pitcher data. So if a guy's taken on a pitcher and he throws a sinker 50% of the time, and that guy has like a 400 ISO against sinkers, I'm actually going to like that play more. And this is stuff that I dig into into my own research, but I can't quite uh, get that out to you guys all in this video in the morning. So um, if you're interested in my Patreon package, that stuff will be included in my power rankings. I'll have notes of these things, you know, such as the example I just mentioned with the 50% sinker and the guy that crushes those sinkers. So anyways, that's enough of the promo stuff. Uh, as far as the Patreon, I have released merch. Um, if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and check the description description uh get anything you want over there for kjk dfs apparel uh, i got all sorts of stuff t-shirts long sleeve t-shirts um you know sweatshirts pillows tapestries you name it uh you can go ahead and check that out um link in the description for the kjk dfs merch and I will be over there on Twitter at KJK underscore DFS, trying to tweet out updates whenever I can before lock as far as weather and all that fun stuff, the updates we get throughout the day. And that is it. Enough of the rambling, enough of the promo stuff. Uh, let's start breaking down this slate today on FanDuel and DraftKings. So as always, I always say I like to break down the uh, K rate. It's fantasy sports. We get points for strikeouts. And for guys we want to target today, the first that stands out is that in Robbie Ray. Uh, Robbie Ray is a guy who I've mentioned many times in the past. You know, um, he's a high strikeout, high hard contact rate pitcher. He either strikes guys out or he gives up hard contact. So he pops off the page as far as, uh, you know, K rate on the slate immediately. But he's taken on a Houston Astros team who crushes lefties. And when you look at their uh, Robbie splits, you know, he it, he just gives up a ton of hard contact to right-handed hitters. And this lineup's loaded with good right-handed hitters that can hit. So while he tops the slate in K percentage, Robbie's not a uh, place I'm going to want to go today. But a place that I do have a lot of interest in, my second on the list here, and you Darvish, taking on the Kansas City Royals, a team that strikes out a ton. And he's got a 30.5% strikeout rate, a 3.61 Sierra, Sierra. And then scrolling along, you know, a splits... Uh, he's got a 35% K rate against righties. And then um, lefties is where he dips off. He does struggle against left-handed hitters. You can actually, it really sticks out in Darvish's splits. You know, he's, he's worst on my chart against lefties, arguably so. He is a guy that's strongly matchup dependent. And when looking at uh, his matchup today, he is... As I already mentioned, he's taken on the Kansas City Royals. But as far as his splits concerns, you know, they have 
one, two, three, four. They're going to put five lefties in there, but they still have a high K rate. So um, I don't think that's going to change my opinion on Darvish at all. Um, I still like him a lot here. So yeah, like you Darvish a lot. Um, uh, moving on from Darvish, the next guy on our list that piques my interest is that in Mike Clevenger. Clevenger comes in with a 28.6% K rate. Uh, his ground ball and fly ball stuff is where it's a little bit concerning, but it doesn't really matter. He, he's taken on a Cincinnati team who the, the K rate's there. Clevenger's got the, that elite stuff. He, you know, he's a fire throwing young kid. He goes out there. He's got a lot of energy on the mound. And while that doesn't translate to stats and DFS, uh, you got to like to see it. And when looking at his splits, um, you know, Clevenger against righties, he's got a 33.2% K rate. And then scrolling further along against lefties, it does drop off at a 24.5. And you can see, you know, his hard contact rate and stuff starts to get a little worse. Um, so, you know, Clevenger just overall got to have interest in him here. Um, going and looking, you know, at the, the park he's pitching in, he's pitching at home in Cleveland. He's a 127 favorite, so he doesn't have a, a huge gap as far as favoritism from Vegas, but he comes in at a 9-6 price tag and he's taken on a Cincinnati team that strikes out a ton and he's definitely got the talent to get the, the job done for you on this slate. So another guy to have interest in. Um, and then moving further along, a guy that I definitely have interest in is Ross Stripling. And Ross, I have a lot of interest in him mainly because of, you know, his matchup. Uh, he's taken on a San Diego Padres team where the strikeouts are there. And when looking at his splits, we can see he's got a 24.2% K rate against uh, right-handed hitters. And then moving further along, he's got a 26% against left-handed hitters. So he's pretty even across the board as far as his splits. And, you know, he doesn't have elite K stuff, but he's pretty decent. And he's taken on a team that's going to help him in that category in the San Diego Padres. Uh, the Padres definitely have a lot of strikeouts in their lineup. And when looking at what they're going to roll out today to, to take on Stripling, you know, you got Tatis, Grisham, Machado, Pham, uh, the young kid in Tronomworth. I really haven't seen a lot of him, so not sure what he has to offer. I'll have to keep an eye on that. And then Myers, Almonte, Hedges, and Profar at the bottom of the lineup. So he's a 126 favorite, and he's 8-7 on FanDuel. Um, so you're going to pay for him, but the spot's good, and you got to like him here. And then moving further along, the guy... Well, we have two more guys that I would say I really like. And those two guys are right here in Dylan Bundy and Hauser. So we'll go ahead and break down Bundy first. Bundy's taken on a Seattle Mariners team who strikes out a ton. Um, he actually was in the same spot last time I had analyzed him. When he went out and put on a great performance, he got a price bump on FanDuel. You know, he's up to 9K, I believe. Um, yeah, he's up to 9K. Last time I had, he was in the 8K range or so when I had promoted him. But he comes in as a 158 favorite. Uh, he gets to go over there and to Seattle to pitch. And, you know, it's not a bad ballpark to pitch in at all. And then it's just the matchup. These guys strike out a ton. And Bundy's got good strikeout stuff. He is a little bit splits heavy uh, as we had gone over last time. You know, he's got that 30.4% K rate against right-handed hitters. And then it, as you scroll along, it drops down to a 24% clip against lefties. But... I mean, a 24% clip against lefties is respectable, and the 304 is really good. So, taking on the Seattle team, it's just good. I just like the matchup. Uh, the price tag, you're going to pay for a little bit at 9K, but I think it's well worth it today. And then lastly, you have, uh, as I mentioned, Hauser, who comes in with a 24% K rate. Pretty decent across the board. His fly ball and his ground ball stuff's good. And then, you know, he's got the 23.5 against righties, and he's pretty green across the board there as far as fly ball, woba, and hard contact rate. And then against lefties, the K rate kicked up to 31.1% uh, K rate. So, you know, we almost prefer him against lefties as far as upside in daily fantasy sports because we want those strikeouts. So, you know, when looking at the lineup he's taken on today, um, they do have quite a few righties the White Sox are a little bit right-handed heavy but the strikeouts are there so once again not an ideal matchup for splits 
but strikeout matchup wise, I, I really like it. And if you look at his price tag on FanDuel, he's coming in at a 6 1 price tag. I mean, that's very, very affordable. And then if we look over on DraftKings, um, he's going to come in at a 8.1K price tag. So, you know, that sticks out a ton um, as far as. Hit price difference on on sites. FanDuel, I think Hauser. You have to really, really like Hauser today on FanDuel. Um, I mean, that just really sticks out to me. And I'm gonna I'm gonna really promote him heavily on FanDuel today. Um, so yeah, that's my you know ramble on Hauser. Go ahead and get him in your lineups on FanDuel. And then. That's pretty much my overall breakdown as far as pitchers to target um, for putting in your lineups. And then to start breakdown, guys, we're going to want to target against, you know, I always like to look at the hard contact percentage. So we'll go ahead and sort my chart by that. And the first one that sticks out is that Robbie Ray, who we already discussed. You know, he's got high strikeout rate guy, but he also has hard contact problem. And he's taking on a Houston Astros team that absolutely rakes lefty. So I'm going to have interest in these Astros. Um, unfortunately, my video wasn't able to export yesterday, but I had actually gone ahead and broken down these Astros yesterday as well. I really liked them against Bumgarner, and, and it paid off. So, you know, Altuve going deep last night. He's another guy. He's a guy to have interest in again tonight. He kills left-handed pitching. He's only 3-6 on FanDuel. That's too cheap. Springer at 3.5 is too cheap. Bregman at 3.9, he's, he's appropriately priced, but I don't care. I love him in the spot. He got the best numbers against left-handed uh, pitching. And then, you know, last night I, I actually went ahead and played uh, Martin Maldonado in the 9 spot at a 2-3 price tag, which is a little bit contrarian because he's a catcher, and, you know, you aren't usually playing catchers in your catcher first base spot on FanDuel. But he kills left-handed pitching, and he's part of this Houston lineup, uh, and I'm going to have interest in him again tonight. And then uh, Uleski Gariel in the middle of the lineup and Carlos Correa. I like those guys a lot too. So have interest in the Houston stack tonight. And second on the list for hard contact is that in Randy Dobnik of the Minnesota Twins taking on Pittsburgh. Uh, we're only dealing with a 37 innings pitch sample size, so keep that in mind. But when looking at his splits, you can see you know his K rate against the lefties is terrible. And then his hard hit rate over here, he has a 46% clip. Everything else is green across the board though, so it's a little bit um, contradicting his stats. But, you know, he's second on the list in hard contact. And if we go over to who he's taking on today, he's taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. And it's in Pittsburgh. So, and, and Pittsburgh only has a 3.59 implied run total. So, while I, go, I, while I like to uh, go ahead and sort my chart, in this case, we're going to go ahead and, and, you know, eliminate that. I actually don't like the spot. Um, so, you know, when looking at Dobnik, he might, he might appear as a guy you might want to target in the hard contact rate category, but I actually really don't like the spot for Pittsburgh, so I just want to go ahead and uh, let that be known for anyone that's using my sheet. <clears throat> so a spot we will have interest in, though, is the Minnesota Twins, and the Minnesota Twins are going into Pittsburgh, so they're going to be the away team. One thing that people don't think about in uh, DFS is when you are stacking an away team, you know, they're on the road, so let's say they go ahead and score 10 runs, they're going to get the hit in the ninth inning no matter what. Of course, if they're scoring 10 runs you might, and the other team's not scoring at all, you might have some uh, risk of some pinch hit. You know, your guy getting pinch hit for. But um, I'm assuming if they have 10 runs, you're going to be pretty happy with, with your results already. So, yeah, um, just something to mention there. Um, you know, Minnesota, a team that's stacked up and down, and they get to take on Trevor Williams when looking at his stats. We'll see that, you know, he's got a 4.86 Sierra, which I believe if I sort my chart, comes in as uh, worse on the slate. And, yeah, that is the case. So, you know, he's a guy we're definitely going to want to target here. Uh, Minnesota stacked, and when looking at Williams splits uh, against righties, he's got that 22% K rate, and then he's pretty orange across the board. So definitely have interest in the righties. And then against lefties, 
it doesn't get any better, and he's actually got a walk issue. The strikeouts bump up to 27.3, but as far as Wobo and hard hit rate and slugging, they're all below average, and he's taking on a Minnesota team that's stacked. So we're going to want to target these guys on the, the Minnesota squad with power. So especially with their pricing. Oh, my goodness. Um, these prices are too low. 3-1, uh, 3-2. You know, Cruz is appropriately priced at 4-1, but then you got Rosario at 3-1. Yeah, uh, like that a lot. Love Kepler, love Polanco, love Rosario. Uh, have a lot of interest in Garver at 2-4. Sano, I have a lot of interest at 3-1. And then even Marvin Gonzalez at 2-6, like him. Uh, Luis Arias is a guy that, you know, you're, you're going to have to rack up your fantasy points with him getting on base and hitting doubles and getting RBIs. You're not going to get much in the power category, but can definitely have interest at second base at only a 2-4 price tag. And then Byron Buxton isn't the greatest hitter, but he's got a ton of speed. So if he's able to find his way on base, you know, you're looking at a lot of stolen base upside. So you can really have interest in one through nine, but my main candidates here are going to be, you know, Max Kepler, Polanco, Cruz, Rosario, Garver, and uh, Sano. They're the guys with the power and um, they're the ones you're going to want to really target here. Moving further along here, the next spot you're going to want to have interest in is that in the Chicago Cubs. The Chicago Cubs get to go to Kansas City and take on the terrible pitching staff that is the Kansas City Royals. And, you know, this Bubik kid is a guy we don't really have a lot of data on, but he's a left-handed pitcher. And with the Kansas City bullpen behind him, uh, you're going to love these Cubbies today. And they are on the road, so they get that the top of the ninth guarantee that I had mentioned earlier. So guys, we're going to want to target, you know, Chris Bryan, Anthony Rizzo, Javi Baez. They're priced appropriately, though, so you are going to pay for the stack where, uh, you know, that's probably when our friend Adrian Hauser is going to come and play over here um, at 6-1 on FanDuel. Like him a lot. The Chief, I'd mentioned that. Um, and then you got Contreras with a ton of power, Schwarber with a ton of power, and he's only 2-9, so I like Schwarber a lot. And I like Ian Happ at 3-1. And, you know, that would probably round out who I'm interested in. The 6-8 through eight range is where my interest fades off a little bit. I'm not saying you shouldn't have interest in them. And actually at their price tags, I could, I definitely could, you know, advise just throwing them in there because they're part of the stack and you can fit them in. So I get that. It is, a, it, we know, we play daily fantasy sports. There was a salary cap involved. Um, but, you know, guys, we really want to have interest in probably were one through five. Get those guys in if at all possible. And then the rest, I don't have an issue with either, just not my main targets. And then maybe even looking at a wraparound stack, uh, meaning, you know, you play the nine hitter and then the one through three um, so that when he gets on base, top of the lineup comes up and then you get all those points for the, the hits and the RBIs and the runs and all that fun stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to have a lot of interest in the Cubbies today. And then, <clears throat> you know, my last spot of interest has to be that in Coors Field. Got to mention it every slate. It sucks trying to break down whether you want to play Coors or whether you don't want to play Coors. But today, uh, I got a newsflash for you guys. You're probably going to want to play some Coors Bats because we have Logan Webb going in the Coors, taking on a Rockies team. And when looking at Webb's numbers, they are not the greatest. We're dealing with a 47 innings pitch sample size, but he comes in the second worst of the slate in Sierra. His K percent's low. He's in Coors Field. That ain't going to help. Uh, his hard hit con or his hard percentage hard hit rate is very bad 42 and a half percent um and then righties he's terrible and lefties he gets a little better so we actually would prefer the righties here i mean he's got a 523 slugging against righties that's not going to get the job done he's got a 40.9 percent hard hit rate and then he's got a 380 woba against righties so yeah um gotta like Arenado today. You gotta like Trevor Story today, and really you gotta like all these Rockies. So you gotta like these Rockies bats one through nine. Um, I know one through nine is broad analysis. I don't really like being broad. I try to give you guys specific, you know, picks and specific places to target. And you know, I'm going to in the splits. Like the righties, you gotta love. So Trevor Story and Arenado are top of your list today. You gotta get those guys in your lineup. It sucks that they're going to be so high owned. Everyone's going to have them. They, I can see these guys being like 40 to 50% owned, honestly. And it's a 10 game slate. So it's going to be tough. Um, if you go ahead and don't play these guys and you're playing in tournaments and they go ahead and go out there and struggle, uh, uh, you're going to really like your chances of, you know, winning big. But 
Um, with that being said, good luck because I don't see them not coming through in this spot. They're going to have high ownership and for good reason. So, you know, get Story and get Arenado in your lineups. And then really everyone else, I, you know, you're dealing with positions and, and price tags. But I really do like this lineup one through nine. You know, get the guys with power in there. Uh, Daniel Murphy, McMahon, Matt Kemp. I had mentioned the, the splits against righties. Go ahead and throw him in there. On the outfield, Chris Owings at 2.7 in the outfield. So I like all these guys. It just depends on the other stack you like and, and what you're going with for the rest of your lineup and then the pitching you're deciding to go with. Um, but you got to have interest in all these guys up and down the lineup. And then the San Francisco side, you, you can definitely have interest in, um, but I'm going to limit my interest in them in comparison to, well, here I go with the, the back and forth stuff again, but we're talking about course field, so good luck. Um, they're too cheap. So, you know, Dickerson at 3-1, Brandon Belt at 3-4, Longoria at 3-4. They're too cheap, so I understand just throwing them in your lineups and liking it. But the reason I had gone ahead and started to mention maybe not playing them today is that because they're taking on John Gray, who's a guy that's pretty, you know, successful at course Field. He's got a pretty good track record. Uh, when, you're, when you're breaking down pitchers at course Field, the guys that have the breaking stuff, that you know, the 12-6 curveballs that drop straight down, uh, they don't really break the same in the Colorado weather. They get hung up, and, you know, and, and they leave some hangers in the zones, and, the, and those balls get crushed. But John Gray's pitch profile, he actually does pretty well at Coors Field. You know, he's not throwing, going out there and relying on that 12-6 or anything. So <clears throat> just some food for thought there. Um, you know, I do like these Giants bats because of their price tags, but I, I would definitely prioritize the uh, Colorado side today. And yeah, that's um, pretty much my breakdown. I would say, you know, my last spot I have to mention though is that in in the Los Angeles Angels, they're taking on a pitcher in, in Marco Gonzalez, and you know he's not the greatest. Going over here and looking at his numbers, uh, you'll see that he's you know one of the worst on the slate as far as Sierra is concerned. And then when you're looking at his splits, he struggles against right-handed hitting. And lefties, he struggles even more. So he's actually a little reverse splitsy, as they like to call it, uh, meaning that he's can be, he's stronger against the opposite handedness uh, batter rather than the same handedness, which typically that's not the case. You know, typically lefties are better against lefties and righties righties are better against righties, that type of deal. <clears throat> um, so yeah, you could actually have some interest in the, in the lefties, but when looking at the uh, Angels lineup, you're not really going to get a lot of those, and I don't think you're going to get one of them actually. They are loaded with righties, which is fine. We still like this spot, and we want to talk to you guys that crush left-handed pitching. Um, you know, Fletcher, I like a lot. Trout, I like a lot because he's the best hitter in baseball, in my opinion. Anthony Rendon, I love. Play Anthony Rendon today. Uh, you're going to have a difficult time deciding, though, because you got to play, you know, you got Rendon, Bregman, you got uh, Arenado. The third base spot's loaded today, so, you know. Uh, could definitely throw one in the third base spot and one in your utility if you can fit that in. I like all three of those guys a lot. And Justin Upton and then Albert Pujols has been tearing it up lately, so uh, you got to like Albert uh, chasing that home run milestone. And then you got uh, Joe Adele at two one, who's the Angels' top prospect, and I think you can go ahead anytime there's a top prospect that gets called up and he's only you know two point one or he's close to minimum salary. Hop on the bandwagon, you know, see what the kid's capable of, and uh, go ahead and play him today. So let's go ahead and do a quick breakdown of what i gone over. Um, Minnesota against Pittsburgh and Trevor Williams. you got to have a lot of interest there, mainly the guys with power. So you got Kepler, Polanco, uh, Cruz, Rosario, Garver, and Sano. Um, have some interest in Clevenger as a pitcher. And then scrolling further along here, we have the Cubbies in Kansas City. You got to like them a lot here in this spot. They are priced appropriately at the top of the order, but there's some guys lower in the order with some power, such as Contreras and Schwarber, that are priced, you know, a lot cheaper. Got to have interest in them. I love Darvish in this spot. And I moving over to this other game, I like Hauser a lot at six one on Fanduel. Uh, Coors Field, you gotta like the Rockies today. It's tough because they're gonna be so high owned, but you gotta like them. And most notably, you know, uh, it's honestly one through nine. Uh, I hate being broad, but it really is. I like all these guys. Uh, but you're, you know, your prime top plays are that in, in Story and Arenado. We had gone over the splits uh, of, Wo of Webb 
and he struggles against right-handed hitting, and Story and Arenado absolutely rake out home in Colorado, and they're just good hitters. Go ahead and throw those guys in your lineups. Um, and then, you know, uh, Houston, I have a lot of interest in them, and I don't think they're appropriately priced, so go ahead and take advantage while you can, because I think they're going to be priced up here soon. So you got Springer at 3.5, Altuve at 3.6. Bregman is the guy I think that is appropriately priced, but he's probably my favorite in the spot, so go ahead and throw some Bregman in there if you can. Carlos Correa, I love him at 3.3. Uh, Uleski Gariel at 2-9, I like him. And then you got uh, Martin Maldonado at the bottom of the lineup at 2-3 as a contrarian play. Uh, he kills lefties. He is at the bottom of the order, so you know not the top of the field, but maybe another wraparound stack spot, maybe a 9-1-2-3, a 9-1-3-4 type of deal. And lastly, the Los Angeles Angels going into Seattle, taking on Marco Gonzalez. Uh, great spot for them. Guys, you want to target Fletcher, Trout, Rendon, Upton, Adele. And Pujols. I like Pujols. And then Max Stassi actually crushes lefties, too. Got to mention him. 2-5, uh, that's a pretty nice play. Uh, I definitely like Stassi there. It's one guy I forgot to mention earlier. And Taylor Ward at 2K. So, you know, um, price tags, it's a thing. Your premier options are that in Trout, Rendon, and Upton. They're preferred. And then I do like Fletcher at the 2-9 spot, or at 2-9K in the leadoff spot. So yeah, that's my breakdown of this MLB DFS slate. Um, as I had mentioned in the beginning of the video, I was saying I'm going to be doing a giveaway today, and I am. One lucky winner is going to get a free uh, KJK DFS t-shirt. All you have to do is leave a comment below on your favorite guy to hit a home run on today's slate. And follow me over on Twitter at KJK underscore DFS. So yeah, follow me on Twitter. Leave your favorite home run call in the YouTube comments, and I will be picking one lucky winner to receive a free t-shirt. And that is my giveaway for today and my breakdown of today's slate. Um, if you're interested in my Patreon package, go ahead and link in the description. You can get access to my power rankings and all that fun stuff. I do have my merch released. If you're interested, go ahead and check that out. Link in the description. Follow me over on Twitter at KJK underscore DFS for updates whenever possible uh, later on in the day. And then go ahead and like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you think you're going to be tuning in to future videos. And yeah, I, uh, that'll be it for today. I appreciate all the support, guys. Uh, best of luck tonight, and have a good one.